Welcome to On Call with Dr. Jason Goldman. I am super excited today to be here with our new Chief of Maternal Fetal Medicine for Catholic Health, Dr. Diana Garetta. Welcome Thank you. to Catholic Health, which is, I know you're not that new anymore, and, and, and welcome to the show. Tell me first, I always ask, how'd you get to, to be where you are today? Where'd you go to school? What got you interested in medicine? Give me a flavor. So background, I am from Long Island. Okay, yeah, so native. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, always native. a reason to be on yeah, Long Island. Yes, right? exactly. Uh, you know, my parents are east of here, so back in the day, I did go to Longwood. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I did um, college and medical school in Pennsylvania. I did med school at Drexel College of Medicine and college. I didn't at get Lillenberg. into Drexel. I'm sorry. I still remember. <laughs> It was it was a very lovely school. Yeah, I had a awesome. good time. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then I uh, had done my residency out here again at Stony Brook. You did OB at Stony Brook? I did OB at Stony Brook and then did my maternal fetal medicine fellowship at Einstein at Monte Carlo. MFM is three years? Three years. Three years. After so your four of OB guy residency. Okay. Yes. So what in the world does MFM look like for Catholic Health? Um it, so very busy. Very busy service. So we're, we have outpatient units in Good Sam and West Islip. We are we also have a very big presence out at Mercy in Nassau. And then we have outpatient sites in St. Catharines and St. Charles as well. So everywhere, essentially, we have or have had OB, yes. we have an MFM location. Correct. So what does a normal day look like for an MFM? Are you um, in the hospital? Are you in the office? Do you bounce back and forth? I know, I, I know yeah. you don't have to deliver the babies. Yes, I have. I have. I'm, sure you, I, I'm yeah, sure you know quite how a bit, to. Yeah. <laughs> quite a bit until, uh, you know, more recently. But the usual day is, you know, checking in with the labor floor, find out what's going on there, see the inpatients that need to be seen, and then go to the outpatient site to then do both consultations for patients and ultrasound of the fetus. Right? Um, how many MFMs do we have now here you know, at We have Health. four of us. Covering the whole health system. The whole health system. Mm. So yes. that's really, everybody's taking call all the time. Yes. Right. Yes. Now you're not coming in to deliver the babies, but you're on call if there's an issue or it's one of it's one of the patients you're or following. Sick person or person mm -hmm. that comes in. Yes, absolutely. They're going to call one of us on call to make a plan or a delivery if needed. Yes. Yeah, whatever's needed. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I chuckle as I'm listening to this because as I'm, I'm a pulmonologist, used to be in practice in Good Sam, and the, my right. most dreaded phone calls <laughs> were pregnant the pregnant <laughs> patient who was ready, who's short of breath, you know, and they're all short of breath. It's part of the physiology of the right. disease, and and you know what's yes. what's the risk and, and benefit of the imaging, and I, I know that uh, I've had a chance to work with some of the predecessors in MFM, yes. you know, with the. I agree with the three-headed monster, right? It's the, the the primary OB in the MFM and myself saying, do we scan? Do we ultrasound? You know, what's right. or can we just say it's it's physiologic? Uh, always a challenge. I appreciate that. That must keep you super busy, but you still must have some time for something. You know, what do you do? What's your what's your downtime? What keeps you calm in such a I'm going to say pretty high stress field, right? Because they yes. have, as much yes. as we're worried about ourselves, when it comes to our kids, when I mean, there's nothing that right. that's that's more critical. So my kiddo, no doubt, you know, keeps me busy, home life, all of that. Yeah, uh, my hobbies, as we spoke of. So I also run. So we spoke a little bit. So about let's talk about running. Training. So you know, my yeah. my my favorite, <laughs> my my newly discovered, only in the past five or six years, favorite passion. When did you start running? <laughs> Uh, when I was 13. Wow. Yeah. Why? What got you into it? Uh, well, my dad was, you know, running at the time. He actually didn't start till he was in his 40s. Yeah. Okay. Hello. See? Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sign you me know, up. Essentially the older version of Couch to 5K at that point. But then he did um, many marathons. Really? So I Good grew him, up huh? around all of that, like him running always on the weekends. And so... Eventually got into cross country. Did he and track did, wait? Did he all. say come do a run? Or you said I really want to? No, he he tortured us a little bit with uh, making us run a mile on the weekends at times. I and, love yeah, it. I we love were, it. <laughs> turkey trots. We doing with turkey trots. We totally did here. the yes. They had the turkey trots. I look at families. I can't wait to do a turkey trot <laughs> with my kid one day. You know. <laughs> yes, exactly. So and then you started doing it in school. Yes, and I did cross country and track. And college I did, too. I did into no? college. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Dr. G, another question I like to ask everybody is, if you were to look back on yourself, you know, 15, 20 years ago, when you were thinking about medicine, you were thinking about what career in medicine, right. what would be a piece of advice you would share with your younger self? Number one, choose the field that you love. 
I mean, I feel very lucky that I happen to love OB-GYN on my rotation. I would have never done it prior to that uh, and never really think of how many years it is to get to the end of it because I also liked neurosurgery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what? That's interesting. That they say that, but uh, all the same, the seven years made me anxious. I'm like, I don't want to do a seven year residency. And yet seven years is how much training I did in the end. So to me, I just say, look at what you love doing. And then each length of time it is won't really matter because you're going in to do what you really love doing. So I enjoyed my training. I still love what I do. And I don't know that that is for everyone. So therefore, that's probably the key to finding the right thing in life to do, whether it is medicine or not, but if it is, finding the right specialty. Well, th listen, <laughs> I think you're gonna be just a home run here at Catholic Health. Thank we you. are super excited to have you. Uh, uh, I think our OB colleagues are happy to have you. MFM will certainly benefit from your expertise. Uh, and I look forward to building those protocols to standardize uh, the care we deliver to yes. really be, I, I will say, as Dr. O says, we may not be the biggest here on Long Island, but we sure as heck have to be the best. Agree. So I, I think Thank you're right you. on board for that. Thank you so much. Thank you it's very a pleasure. much. Thanks for having me today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.